Hi, welcome to my heart dissection. Uh, this is straight from my own very own kitchen at home here. And what I have for you is a sheep heart that is um, not preserved. So this is a lot easier to see the structures on a, on a heart that hasn't been preserved. You have another video on campus that has the preserved heart. So what we're going to do is go down your manual and see all the bold structures uh, that you need to know. So I'm on page 62 of the manual, that's where you should go, and we'll start going down every structure. And I'm actually going to start at number two. Number two says, uh, notice the visceral pericardium. So here's my heart and all this shiny layer on the outside is known as the visceral pericardium because it's attached onto the viscera, which is the heart. Um, I wanted to just pick it up for you because um, one of the things, I'll remove the stick, I'll show you later. One of the things that is difficult the first time you're looking at a heart like this in the anatomy lab is which is the front and which is the back. In other words, which is anterior and which is posterior. So look at this side. I'm going to show you. I'm going to flip it around. Now I'm going to flip it around again. And you'd have to see which is anterior and posterior. So the way I know how to do that is if I switch, flip it around, this side is flatter. And um, if I turn it around, it's more rounded. And then I have the septum here that's quite visible that separates the left ventricle from the right ventricle. This seems to go straight up and down. This comes out at an angle. And this would be the anterior side. And that's going to help you. You need to know which is anterior and posterior to see the vessels. OK, so let's move on to three. And it says, identify the base and the apex. So remember that the base is the broader of the two sections. So base would be here and pointing towards an apex. Larger area, narrower. So this would be the base and this would be the apex of the heart. Next, it directs us to look at the oracles, which are the visible portions of the right and left atria. Sometimes at the slaughterhouse, they cut these a little low, so we'll only see a, a small section of this. Um, so this is a region, here let me turn it around this way, um, in this position, because this is anterior, this darkened area would be the left oracle, and this on the right would be the right oracle of the atria. So if I put my finger in here, I'm coming into the atria. All right, um, <clears throat> determine anterior and posterior. Uh, we did that. A clue is the anterior interventricular sulcus. So there you are again. You have the interventricular, meaning between the ventricles, interventricular sulcus. It's also called the longitudinal sulcus. That, again, is going to separate the two ventricles. <clears throat> Um, the next two structures, anterior interventricular artery and the great cardiac vein, I want you to eliminate those. Scratch those out. You won't need to know those. Those are harder to show. So that is going to allow me to move on to number four. On four, it says place the heart in the anatomical position. So we have it now in anatomical position. And locate the pulmonary trunk. Okay, the trick here is the vessel that is most anterior, the one that you can really see in the anterior part of the heart, is going to be the pulmonary trunk. Let's see if I can get my stick in there. There we go. So I have the stick in a vessel. I'm going to rotate this so that you can see these vessels. And there you have the most anterior vessel going to be the pulmonary trunk and then posterior to that is the aorta okay that's going to be the trick so I can put my finger in there to see most anterior 
Okay. On five, it says, after that, locate the aorta. So we did that. Pulmonary trunk and then very large, huge vessel. Posterior to it is the aorta. Um, often, if the aorta has not been cut too low, you can see another vessel called the brachiocephalic, which is going to be a branch here off the aorta. On this heart, it was cut too low, and you won't be able to see the brachiocephalic artery. Six um, directs us to the superior and inferior vena cava. So I'm going to rotate, and instead of showing you sort of this anterior section, I'm going to turn it around to find those two more posteriorly. This large entryway here, oh, this is great, um, is the superior vena cava. So it's, again, it's been cut low, but the entrance of venous blood would be coming in here, superior, and then notice here, my stick is coming out the other end, would be the entryway to the inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava is essentially a hose, right, a vessel that's draining from the lower body. And this superior vena cava is a vessel that's draining from the upper body. And both of those will end up in the same place, in the right atrium. Okay, superior and inferior vena cava. That's good. Um, the pulmonary veins are also visible in that posterior view, and it is a large opening here. So if I have superior vena cava there, the very large opening, and again, it's only because they cut it so low. If this were higher, we would see at least two entryways of blood coming from the lung. Okay, so that would be the region of the pulmonary veins. What we want to do next is um, look at the interior structures. So what I would have to do then is, I'm coming back to my original position here, and I would locate the pulmonary trunk and cut in through the pulmonary trunk towards the interventricular into the septum here, into the interventricular sulcus. And then cut along that line, cut along, cut along the line. Look, I have to rotate it to follow this ventricle that rotates around, and then cut up in that position there. So as to form a little window that we can look inside this major ventricle there. What I've done is I have a second heart that's already cut, so I'm going to replace it for my second one that's already opened, and then we can see the internal structures starting on that number eight. 